Toji Fushiguro versus Quan Shi. These are two top-notch assassins few people want to mess with, and today we're putting them head-to-head -to, -head to see who wins in a fight. I guess we'll just get into it. This is a surprisingly straightforward topic to discuss, as it's more about the raw stats and equipment. Not a whole lot of crazy hacks going on here. My last video on a topic like this was Makima vs. Gojo, and I'm not even gonna lie, that one was hard. So thank you, dear subscriber, for the recommendation of Toji vs. Versus Quan Chi. This is a lot easier, so we're gonna discuss their stats, then go into the specifics of how their abilities or weapons would interact with each other. But yeah, big fight, who would kick whose ass? To make this easier, I'm gonna talk about Quan Chi in base form and Quan Chi in her transform state separately, in terms of how she would perform against Toji. Now, Quan Chi in base form is by no means weak. In what seems to be a single attack, she cuts straight through the heads and bodies of 49 people. This is also Quan Chi's best speed feat in base, which I already discussed in my Makima vs. Gojo video. The speed feat that is most talked about in Chainsaw Man is when Quan Chi blitzes and kills some devil hunters and a ton of human dolls. Don't get me wrong, she is easily faster than a normal human can perceive, that much is clear. However, when calculating this feat, a lot of people do the math as if she crossed that entire distance in the necessary time frame to blitz all of them, which doesn't make sense because most of the people she kills are turned away from her and didn't even have a chance to react. The only ones who were shown to be looking at her were the Devil Hunters right in front of her. Granted, she is still quite fast, since Aki was only able to react by seeing a few seconds into the future. And the Angel Fiend, who can react to and block bullet fire, was only able to react because of the warning Aki gave, and it's barely. So saying Quan Chi is faster than a handgun bullet is a safe bet. For context, a 9mm goes a little faster than sound. This all being said, there's the possibility that this isn't Quan Chi's average or consistent speed. After this, she fights Yoshida, who claims her strength would kill him and that it isn't human. Which implies that Yoshida himself is physically a normal human, and he does manage to react to her attacks. Don't get me wrong, she's faster than him, but she's not imperceptible to him. The moment when she blitzes those devil hunters and dolls is written very similarly to moments like when Katana Man does his blitz attack. All the high hybrids seem to have some method of gaining a momentary burst of speed, and somehow Quan Chi has managed to do this in base form. My point is that burst of speed is not going to be how fast she is all the time. Normally, she's just at a level where she's outpacing top-level human fighters. Then again, I could be reading into this too much. After Quan Chi does her big blitz attack, she immediately goes after Denji, and Yoshida is the only one who can track her movements. Kinda hard to say, since there's a lot of interpretation involved. Either way, Quan Chi is consistently faster than any human being is capable of with the ability to reach supersonic speeds. So how strong is Toji in comparison? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, Toji demolishes base Quan Chi. Now in scaling Toji, we thankfully have more than just his few fights. Ever since Maki awakens the full potential of her heavenly restriction, she became just like Toji, and they should at least be relative to each other. So we can use some of Maki's feats to scale Toji. Early on in the story, Maki uses Playful Cloud on Hanami, creating a notable wound on their arm and busting through a lot of trees in the process. Process. This is already an arguably better strength feat than Quan Chi's 49-person massacre. It's hard to tell how many trees got busted up by Maki's attack since the impact effect covers a lot, but your average tree is a lot more durable than a human being. And this is a version of Maki who is several times weaker, so Toji definitely outclasses base Quan Chi in terms of power. Speed, on the other hand, is a bit more difficult to figure out. Like I said, we know Toji and Maki should be relative. Even when now Aya broke the sound barrier as a human, Maki had to figure out his technique and timing to intercept his attack. She wasn't faster, just smarter. So Toji likely isn't supersonic in speed either. However, this is just in terms of pure physical speed. With Maki's latest power-up, she stated to be equal to Toji. And her power-up was purely a mental thing, not a physical boost as far as I can tell. With Maki now being able to read her surroundings so well, she can react to the movements of someone who can reach Maki. 3. 
Regardless, he should have no problem dealing with Quan Chi's normal base speed, and while her little burst of speed might be a problem depending on how you view it, she doesn't display the strength to deal massive damage to Toji. After all, Toji was able to tank Gojo's red technique, which is at least twice as powerful as his blue technique that could tear through buildings and rip multiple trees from the ground. The most the red technique did to him was cause superficial damage. This isn't to mention Quan Chi's biggest disadvantage here, and that's her equipment. As far as we know, she utilizes completely normal swords that broke apart from her sheer strength. If she manages to clash with Toji, who utilizes weapons amped by cursed energy, her swords aren't surviving that. Needless to say, Quan Chi is left with one option in such a fight. She'll have to transform. This brings us into a much more interesting fight. Not only does transforming provide a boost to her physical capabilities, but it also gives her better options in a fight. First off, the physical boost, which should be more than decent. When Denji transforms, he's able to throw cars around and outspeed any normal human. And when Quan Shi transforms, she's so fast that she disappears from Denji's sight and is described as invisible by Santa Claus, meaning she has to be several times faster than them. And that burst of speed she's capable of would put her to several times the speed of sound when she really tries. It's hard to say since we can't confidently give an upper limit, but at the minimum it's probably a speed that Toji would be able to react to, just not physically match. Again, similar to the difference between Maki and Naoya. Moving on, we also need to talk about Quan Chi's boost in power. Which is kind of hard to tell, because we never really see a definitive upper limit in terms of attack potency. She basically shreds through Santa Claus like tissue paper, and when she tries to attack her at night, Santa Claus just catches them. Thus, kind of avoiding the sharp part, and making it hard to judge a limit to her attack potency. The best we can say is that we see Denji mostly tank an attack that basically destroyed a building, and another attack that blasted him through 13 floors of another building. And since Denji is portrayed as a lot weaker than Quan Chi, and her arrows heavily damage Santa Claus who did one of those attacks, it's fair to say her arrows have a lot more power than those attacks do. It's hard to say how much she would be able to damage Toji, but for comparison's sake, we see Jogo heavily damaged by a similar attack to the one Denji tanked albeit on a bit larger scale. And since Jogo dealt with Gojo's red technique similarly to Toji, hell, arguably better, then we can conclude that Toji is equal to or less than Jogo in terms of raw durability. Through this frankly overcomplicated scheme of scaling feats, I think it's safe to conclude that Quan Chi's arrows would do some major damage to Toji. This all being said, Toji is not without alternative options to just swinging a weapon around hoping to hit something. Inside his cursed spirit, he has a decent arsenal. Toji's first bet would probably be to use the flyheads in order to obscure himself, undermining Quan Chi's speed advantage. Like I said, Toji can probably react to her, but Quan Chi fights from a distance and is physically faster. He'd need some kind of way to close the gap, and catching her off guard through some kind of covering is the best way. And the flyheads could work to some degree, but I do imagine that Quan Chi would respond to this simply by shooting arrows everywhere to either kill the flyheads or attack Toji despite him being hidden. As for his weapons, there are two to look out for. The first was revealed in the latest chapter, a cursed tool called Split Soul Katana. Its description seems to tell us that it basically ignores the durability of a target and cuts the soul directly. The durability negation is what really matters here, so if Toji lands a solid hit on Quan Chi, it's gonna hurt or maybe even end the fight. The other weapon that might give Toji a good chance is the Inverted Spear of Heaven. This knife has the ability to negate any curse technique it comes into contact with. Now, Quan Chi does not have access to curse techniques, but there is a possible interaction here. Cursed energy is born from negative emotions, including fear, and Devils and Chainsaw Man are physical manifestations of different fears. By this logic, I could see it being possible that if Toji were to land a single hit with it on Quan Chi, it would take her out of her transformation. On its own, this would be difficult to achieve considering the speed difference and Quan Chi's ranged attacks, but with the infinitely stretching chain of a thousand miles, I don't think we can write it off as impossible, especially if he uses the flyheads in combination with these things. 
Again, this is a speculative interaction, but if we take it as true, then Toji has a good chance at winning because Quan Chi in base form doesn't really stand a chance. But yeah, that's my take on this fight. I think Quan Chi has the overall upper hand, just by virtue of the fact that she should be able to keep her distance and has ranged attacks. That's an inherent advantage that's hard to overcome, but Toji has an arsenal that has the power to deal lethal damage and the possibility of landing those hits, if he uses uses it right, but what do you all think? How do you interpret this matchup of assassins? I found this one interesting to talk about and I'm curious what you have to say so be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching and take care.